Right then, I'm back at this job where we're doing this shower tray screen thing and we had the issue with the tiles or the boarding. I can't remember exactly where I left you because it's been a day or so and I've been off doing other bits. But if I spin this round and show you and talk you through exactly where we're at at the minute. So the tray's out. I think the last time we seen anything, the tiles were up to the bottom there and we was hoping to get a match for the tiles and run some strips up the side to allow um, the screen to come across to this bit. Because we're gonna be taking the tray to this point, because it was before back to the original wall, we was gonna use those tiles and uh, replace the strip up there. However, this house, I think uh, we've worked it out, is about 10, eight to 10 years old. The tiles that they've got are no longer available. So if we did that, it obviously wouldn't match we wouldn't be able to match the tiles at the bottom. So the customer has basically said, right, take all of that out and we will completely retile it with a new style of tile. It just means we can tweak things a little bit better and we know where we're gonna be at with it. So what I'm here today to do is take this shower off so that Nath can then come in tomorrow, get the walls boarded, hardy back of the walls, get it all sealed in and then we can drop back maybe tomorrow or Monday and get the tray in and then they can begin tiling it. Fairly straightforward, that's what we've got to do. I've just turned the water off, it's a pressurized system, so it's perfect. Water's off, completely drained down. So we've now got to take this riser off and take it off here, but I'm a little, a little bit concerned how we're going to cap this off. Because ideally I want to leave this in place for them to board, but uh, yeah, so We've got a grub screw underneath here. So the water's off, let's whip this off and see exactly what we can do to get this shower out of the way and then allow them to board. Right, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody is doing well. I am absolutely knackered. I've just started a big, massive, extension on a house that we it's going to take us into probably the best part of the march april next year to get done it's coming soon to the channel i've filmed a load of stuff on it but i'm absolutely knackered from doing that today's video is the second part of the video i put out it'll be the previous video to this one i put it out on sunday and i just want to say a massive thanks to everyone that commented on that video i'll pop a link above to it if you haven't seen it go and watch it before watching this video uh, because it builds up exactly where we're at now with the video that you're about to watch. And so many people commented saying it was so good seeing me ringing the customer sort of live on the camera and talking him through the process of the issues that we had on that job. Loads of people said that is just real world plumbing at its best. It's how you liaise and how you talk to your customers and keep them informed of what's going on on a job. So this job, just to put you in the loop a little bit, when I quoted it, I said to the customer, me and Nathan Tyler both said, until we get the tiles off, we don't know where we're at. So it's sort of an open-ended price on it. But um, as I said, the previous video showed me interacting with the customer and telling them exactly what we had to do. Now, the following day, we met up with the customer and went through the options and you'll see where we're at in this video. Also, this video is how I fit shower trays. Before anyone comes at me in the comments saying why haven't you used um the the shower tanking kit around the back and why haven't you done this and why haven't you this is how i fit shower trays it's how i fitted shower trays for 25 plus years and touch wood i've never had a single problem with them we all do it different ways so it will be tanked before they tile it so that's not a problem it, it's how i do it i get it everyone has their own opinion but I can't just, you know, it's how I do it. Don't come at me for how I do it because I'm I'm showing you, I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, it's how I do it. Um, so I just wanted to make that plainly clear because people will come at me in the comments for it. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Um, drop me a comment, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We are so, so close to 30,000 uh, subscribers to the channel. When we hit that 30,000, I'm going to do a big giveaway. It's going to include Unilite stuff, Vito Pro Pack stuff, and I'm just going to get loads of stuff together and do a massive giveaway on here and on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, jump over there. If you're not subscribed to the channel, you're going to have to be to be part of the giveaway. Right, that's enough from me. I'm going to let you get on with the video. Hope you enjoy it and I'll catch you soon. Right, that's the riser removed. It was just a case of undoing the back nut fitting there and popping it off 
the top there, then it just pulls out that top bit of the shower. So the next bit is the valve. So underneath, as I said, we've got that little grub screw there. So we're gonna undo that. I'm assuming the valve's gonna come off, but then we're gonna have to have a look and see how we're gonna be able to cap it off and get the water back on. So I've got that grub screw there wound all the way out. I'm going to take it out completely because I don't want it dropping down. And I think with the length of it, it somehow locks that shower onto the back bit. So let's pop that safe there. I'm assuming it will just pull off now. Can't see anything, yeah, see it coming a little bit. Can't see anything else that would be holding it on. There we go. Right, okay. So, that's the shower off. And they're like two little filters. We'll have a look at those in a minute. Right, so what we can do is take these off, like so, and then take this back plate off and we can just pop two uh, push fit caps on there and get the water back on. That's perfect. I was a little bit concerned as to how we was gonna, how we was gonna do that because I didn't know what was internal here. So yeah, that's good. Let's get that off and pop two caps on. So that's the water back on. We'll get the air out of it, work its way out eventually. Um, we've got two caps on, so we're all right there. I was I'm quite happy. It's like that actually. It's um, it's made it a whole lot easier. So this is loose. It was loose before we even got here. It's not even screwed through the side. So grab a couple of screws. Going to secure that so we've got a nice plate for the shower to go back onto little plate here obviously when it's tiled and that we can then just slide that on screw it in and it'll be sorted so we'll fix this into position then get the shower out of the way have a little tidy up and then leave it to Nathan Matty to come in here get it boarded and then we can drop back and get the shower tray in right we're back onto this job now with the shower tray the lads have been out and sorted the walls out what Nathan Matty the Tylers have done, they've put Hardy back aboard on here and all around the bottom here. So what we've got to do now is get this tray into position for them to carry on tiling. I think I've already said the customer in the end decided to completely remove all the tiles and they're the new ones that they're going to have going into this area. But as I say, first of all, we've got to set this tray onto the floor. Now, the outlet for this tray is going to be roughly here. I've just trimmed the top off that waste pipe. So we're gonna lower this tray down now, put it into position, mark the center there, exactly where the waste is going, because we are gonna to have to trim out round here for the waste and obviously get onto the original waste pipe there. So let's lower this in and see what's what. I don't, hopefully we haven't gonna trim any of the floor out. I think we might have to do this then. I don't know, we'll see. We'll drop it in and we'll have a look. So, with it just being, Dropped into place now to mark up for the waste. We haven't got to take the film off the top or anything. So, there we go. so you can see now, because we built this wall out here, that is how far, give or take where that line of the Hardy backer board is, that is how far this way the tray is up to go because before the edge of the tray was built right into the wall if we'd done that there which we wouldn't have done it would have been about there so yeah we are going to have to trim a little bit of this floor out but it is what it is so let's push that make sure that's set in decent measuring put it literally spot on so we'll mark around there we'll lift the tray out of the way and we'll start cutting the floor out Right, we've got the floor cut out for where the waste is going to be. The trap itself is going to sit, give or take, around there. I tried to trim it down real tight down the side here, but as you can see, there's a joint here, and it just gave way when I was cutting it. So the waste is going to sit there, then we're going to come off, slice into the existing waste pipe here, get rid of that elbow, and then hopefully that will all line up exactly how we want it. So it won't be too bad. We're okay then, we've got floor joist there, floor joist there, so it's not a problem at all. What I'm gonna do then is cut this waste now, make up a bit of pipe to get our trap right into position where we want it. 
got a mark here, mark here, there and there. That's sort of like the centre of where we're going to need it. So I'll make it up, I won't glue it into position and then we can mock up exactly where it's going to go, drop the tray in, make sure it fits and then we can look about gluing the waste in, getting it set. We need to trim the section off this floor uh, which we can mark up when the tray is in. Then we can set the tray on the floor and work off that, get it all sealed in. Right then, I've mocked up the trap and the waste pipe in the floor with it just sticking up slightly above the finished floor level. So let's drop the tray in now and make sure that that is, is just where we want it. I've trimmed off the side of this uh, flooring, so it should. So, if you look in here, that will be perfect. Once we've uh, once we've tightened it in, it'll be spot on. So I'm just going to check the tray now for rough sort of level. We'll get it out in a minute, sweep all underneath it and that, but I just want to make sure that it is pretty much level, which it is, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Let's go across here. Bang on, absolutely bang on. Perfect. So the outside of the tray is level. Obviously trays have internal falls. We've got the, the, the trap this end. <laughs> if we wanted to put it over there, it would have been an absolute nightmare to get it through the floor and over to there. So that's where it's got to go. I think the door, we're going to have a sliding door going this way. So let's pop this out of the way. Little tip for you. Get yourself one of these. I think I've got this from Tool Station or Screw Fix or wherever. Um, they're perfect for working on trays and lifting them in and out. Even if it's just that first little bit to get your fingers underneath it, sometimes it can be a right pain. So, like that, see? Lift it right out. So let's get this up, make that waste into position, clean out underneath it, and then I'll show you just how I personally bed the tray down um, this is probably going to divide a few opinions as well. So let's get this bit sorted and we'll drop onto that. That's the base of the tray, swept out, all clean. What we're going to do now is pop the tray down onto the trap and get it all sealed in. Now, what I use personally is BT1. It's a silicon and a very slight adhesive as well. It's a little bit thicker than what normal Dow Corning silicon is. Now, I always bed trays down on that. I always have done, never had an issue. I know some manufacturers say sand and cement, but that's years old now. I personally have bedded it down on silicon for years and years and years. It's not as, as sort of power grabby as what CT1 is, but BT1 for me is spot on. So what we'll do, we'll cover the base in BT1, we'll put some lumps on the bottom, just so we can bed it that little bit better, and then we can drop it down, bed it down, and uh, connecting to the waist here. Again, this is how I do it. People are gonna say they do it the other way, it's wrong, rah, 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 rah. That's how I do it, you know. There's so many different ways of doing it now and using products like this makes so much more sense than sand, cement, etc., etc. Just get the waste for inside again i'll just put a little bit around the outside and then we can get the trap inserted into that one and get it tightened up there we go trays all in i've sealed around the outside of it the lads are going to seal in that shower area and tank that shower area anyway when they come to do it so that's in we can leave it now for the lads to get over get this tiled and then we'll be back to fit the shower and fit the screen and we've got a couple of bath panels to change as well, which I will be getting the chippy in to do because I hate doing bath panels. They're just a pain in the arse. So we'll leave the chippy to you then. When that's time, we'll get back to do that. Yeah. 